that you're going to stop yourself from backbiting. Okay. Question is asked. We're asking support from our Sheikh. Sahib al Sahib, or Sheikh al Kanbisi Rabbani, to send us something that is going to benefit us and others. So many people have problems with that. Say, no, no, as support only from Allah. But these same people, if they are sick, they're going to run to doctor. They say, don't run to doctor, run to Allah. When you're hungry, why you go to open your refrigerator? As from Allah. <laughs> Allah's protocol is what? His protocol is He sends. There are messengers. There are those ones that is going to give it to you. There is a means. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, seek means. Seek the ways, seek the means to come close to me. That is Ayatul Karima. That is the Ayat from the Quran in Islam. If you deny one Ayat, you deny the whole Quran. Which today's Muslims, 21st century empty head, arrogant and ignorant Muslims, they are starting to deny Quran. Of course they are. They're saying, well, Quran is like Bible, hundreds of years later, then they put things together. Or, if it's not hundreds of years later, well, there are so many different kinds of Quran, like there are so many different kinds of Bible. Which one do you know it is correct? Because they planted that seed, saying, well, how do you know it's Rahmanic verses, and how do you know it's Shaitanic verses? Did someone wrote a book? called the satanic verses, addressing the same thing, saying, how do you know? How do you know there is haq and battle? Who's telling you this haq and battle? So much confusion, 21st century, especially headed by the so-called scholars of Islam. We have no problem with those scholars that are just concentrating on the fars, 32 fars of the 54 fars of these basic things, but when those scholars they are going ahead of themselves and they start to invent things. Understand? This is complete bidat. We don't like to use that word Wahhabi they say bidat kufu haram and shirik, but what you're going to say to scholars who are saying, Well, Quran is not perfect. What are we going to say to scholars who says, well, you cannot trust any hadith. What are you going to say to scholars who are saying, well, all those stories about prophets and sahabi kiram and awliya Allah, they are all, these are mythologies, myths. They're not real. The reality is something else, but people just make it out. You cannot take it as haq. It's not meant to be haq, it's just symbol, it's just metaphors. What are you going to say to those scholars who say, well, Jesus is actually crucified. I don't agree with the Quran. Isa alayhi salam was crucified, they're saying. What are you going to say to scholars who are saying, well, we don't also believe in the virgin birth. Too much learning on the left side. Shaitan is going to whisper, they're going to bring up that. Yeah, that we can say this is bidat. Never you have heard coming from Muslim scholars in 1400 years coming up with these different ideas. Hmm? But now they publish one book, shoot to number one best selling list, New York Times, whole America, which means the whole English speaking world and others you're going to translate running after that. On the one hand, they're saying, La ilaha illallah. But the other hand, they're saying, Prophet is not perfect and is not coming from the perfect one. What are you going to say now to those scholars who say that? And there is an open hadith. 
and the hadith it is saying holy prophet والسلام, there will come a group of people in the ahir zaman they're going to say things they're going to claim things that neither your forefathers or their fathers before them they've ever said or they've ever heard don't follow them they are on the wrong road Now when we look 1400 years since the time of Tabi'in they have always followed those ones who followed Tabi'in Tabi, Tabi'in Tabi'in follows the Habi Tabi, Tabi'in means those followers who follow the followers who follow the, so there is always a means a chain a link this is what we call Ahli Sunnah you don't come up with your own ideas Follow those ones who hold on to the truth. For 1400 years, you always see that happening. Ahli Sunnat, Ahli Sunnat, Ahli Sunnat. Suddenly, we see the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, especially. Then it starts spreading. Suddenly, we see different idea people coming. That is not Ahli Sunnat. Now, when that happens, to know the hadith is coming true. Run away from that kind of confusion. Run away. You ask a question. How do you stop yourself from backbiting? When you don't believe in the Quran and you don't believe in the hadith, if you don't believe that there is haq in a battle, So why should someone then stop backbiting? If you start believing, then your heart is going to say, this is wrong, stop. Stop the lies and stop the slander. But people don't have any faith anymore. They don't really believe. They don't believe that backbiting, slandering, it is worse than committing incest <coughs> in front of the Kaaba. <coughs> Meaning the fear of Allah is not there. Why? They say, no, don't talk about fear. It doesn't fit into with our uh, uh, neighbors who are non-Muslims. You must talk about love all the time. Love, 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 love. This is what happened. So, the man who has faith is going to fear from the punishment of Allah. He's not only just going to fear, he's going to feel the punishment of Allah when it happens. You understand? Backbiting is like you're eating the uh, flesh of your own dead brother. Why are you backbiting? Why you need to speak about others? If you backbite, you are going to carry their sins, their burdens. They are going to be clean. You are going to be heavy with their sins. Why you need to backbite? Why you need to say something? You are perfect. You are finished with your own work. If you are perfect that time, definitely you are not going to backbite. Why are you going to say about someone? Why are you not being busy with yourself? Be busy with yourself. You want to complain? Complain about yourself. Don't complain about others. Especially when that one is under the gaze, under the radar, under the protection of the Ewli Allah. Be careful because now you're touching a live wire. You touch them. Don't expect good things to come. One day, if you get that shock, if you get that smack in your face, change and it's never going to come back to normal, you have no one to blame but yourself. Understand? It's common because these are signs of the Ahir Zaman too. People are not afraid of the punishment of Allah. They're not afraid. Why do you need to do that? Why are you taking other people's burdens? 
don't have enough burdens of your own. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't come into my presence with two sins. Two. One is shirk. Association with Allah. Associating their partners with Allah. Even then it's between you and Allah. The other one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't come into my presence because if you come, I will not forgive you. Don't come into my presence with the rights of others. Meaning when you wrong other people, you take away their rights. When you oppress other people, you take away their rights. Especially in these days, they take away the rights of the oppressed. They take away the rights of the orphans. They take away the rights of the good people then don't expect good things to happen to you dunya and ahira. And Allah is saying, I will not accept your forgiveness until they forgive you. So, this world is filled with confusion, backbiting and slander. That's why we're pulling ourselves to the top of this mountain, to be free from all of that. Still, if people want to backbite about us, we say welcome to you. We're not going to stop you. We're not going to go out of our way to stop you because if you want to carry our sins and our burdens, go ahead. You're going to make us light and you're going to be more heavy. Did they stop backbiting and slandering Holy Prophet Lay Sayyidu It's 1400 years. Did they stop? No, they didn't. Did they stop backbiting and slandering our Sheikh? They didn't stop. So, if they stop backbiting about us, that time we have to worry because we are not in the way of our Sheikh or the Prophet. But they are continuing, let them to continue. It's okay. It doesn't bother us. We are not going to go out of our way to say, stop this, don't do this. Why are you. Um, it's okay. Go ahead. Because we are being busy with what we should be busy with. One of the things that you have forgotten, that we have forgotten, be busy with death. Be busy with the remembrance of death. Holy Prophet is saying, if you remember death 40 times a day, you get the reward of a shaheed. Forty times if we remember death. We should remember. Because the fear of death is one of the biggest fitness, one of the biggest the things, uh, weaknesses entering into the ummah that in the last days is going to destroy the ummah. How do you know people are not... Uh, how do you know people are fearing death? Because they're not preparing for death. They prepare for life. They prepare to live as if for a thousand years. They have plans for hundreds of years. And when they do something, they do something as if they have all the time in the world now to fix the problem. The believer must be busy with death. The believer must go to sleep understanding that death is under his pillow and when he wakes up, death is in front of us. The, pil the believer must remember that death it is the doorway to eternal life. And how we want to spend the eternal life is determined by how we spend this life. If we spend this life just being busy with the treasures and the pleasures of this world, running away, from the Ahirat, then that time our eternal life is going to be very difficult. If we are preparing our life here for the eternal life, then that time is going to be so easy. Inshallah, Rahman, may Allah make it easy for us. May Allah raise the station of our Shaykh higher and higher and uh, keep us under His protection to remember death often. One of the reasons why Wahhabis, they don't like the tombs. It's also because it brings people to an understanding of death. 
and how we must be responsible. We're responsible every day. In our way, we're praying the Salatul Janaza every Thursday, every Maghrib time, isn't it? Get up. Go renew with Quickly. It's not a game. Don't take these associations lightly. You don't like it. Go. No one is forcing you to stay. If you are here, there are certain things that you need to hold on for yourself, for your sake, not for mine. So, inshallah, Rahman, we keep that strong within us. Uh, keep the uh, certainty that death will visit us. But sit down and think. Think about that. Say to yourself, like what we said, every Maghrib time we pray Janazah prayer. Don't just pray like that and just reciting giving salams. Say to yourself, imagine it is me right there. That is my body right there. And I'm dead. Right now, if the angel of death, what is it takes my life? What is going to happen? I'm going to leave everything. I love my children so much, I'm going to leave them. I love my wife, my husband. I'm going to leave them. I love everything. I'm going to leave them. People are saying, well, I cannot leave to come to Dergah sometimes. Oh, but there will come a time if something is blowing that you're going to find. It's so easy that time to leave everything because the fire is blowing. Don't wait for the fire to blow when you come. Then that time you're going to come here. You understand? And that time, you may not be first class. You may be third class. <laughs> because those ones who are coming when it's still good outside, but they say, we need to come right now. They're giving up so many things. And they're coming for the sake of Allah. But if the fire is coming and you leave, you're not giving up anything. You have to leave. Otherwise, the fire is going to catch up with you. So pray. The janazah pray. Imagine that is you. What's going to happen right now? What is going to happen? You're going to scream and shout, No, no, my baby. I love you. My property, my car, I love you. I cannot leave. No one is going to hear. No one is going to care. So prepare ourselves for that time. Then the life will have a taste and death, you will have good expectations of it. Because now, you're going to enter into that world, you have already left this world properly. And the fire of regret is not going to burn you. Wa min Allahu tawfiq al-fatih. Amin. Assalamu alaikum.